Thank you, Madam Chair and Senators. Uh, I'm here to present AB 1955, the Support Academic Futures and Educators for Today's Youth Act or Safety Act, which does the following things. First, the bill prohibits and invalidates any policy, rule, or administrative regulation that requires a forced outing as defined. Second, this bill clarifies that teachers shall not be compelled to disclose such an identity unless required to do so under state and federal law. Third, the bill protects teachers from facing retaliation for simply doing their jobs, teaching and providing a safe school environment. And fourth, the Safety Act provides parents and families of LGBTQ students with critical resources in order to support them in working towards acceptance on their own terms without interference from outside actors. To speak to the fiscal impact of the bill, the Safety Act would have minimal and absorbable costs, if any at all, and potentially could achieve cost savings. Should this bill be enacted, we expect a reduction in the Department of Justice's workload, resulting in costs savings, such as eliminating the department's litigation against school districts that, in, that enact unconstitutional forced outing policies, which target students based on their identity. Additionally, costs associated with the Department of Education are minimal, since the department would merely build upon the existing supports and resources for parents of LGBTQ students that they have on hand. Furthermore, we believe that there are issues in the form of cost avoidance. For example, when forced outing policies are enacted, we have seen an increased amount of calls to the crisis hotline. After Chino Valley Unified School District passed their forced outing policy, nearly 1,500 of the total calls received were solely from those who identified as residents of Chino Valley. By clarifying in law that forced outings are prohibited, we minimize those who experience mental health crises, further reducing impacts on our counseling, health service, counseling services and mental health systems. Additionally, due, due largely to lack of acceptance in their identity, some LGBTQ youth make up a disproportionate amount of those experiencing homelessness, as well as though in the foster in the foster care system. Specifically, research shows that LGBTQ youth make up about 40% of youth experiencing homelessness and 30% of youth in foster care, despite LGBTQ youth making up around 10% of the U.S. population. By protecting students from being forcibly outed, we ensure that additional LGBTQ youth do not prematurely enter the foster care system, nor do become homeless, further keeping our youth safe and reducing constraints on the already impacted programs and systems. Here today in testify in support is the Superintendent of Public Instruction, Tony Thurman, and when the time comes, I would respectfully ask for your I vote. Before we move on to the public testimony, I want to reiterate that testimony should focus on state fiscal impacts of the bill. My understanding is that um, the measure had a very thorough public hearing in the Senate Education Committee to discuss the policy merits of the bill. So um, today we'll be talking about the cost. We will take testimony from two primary witnesses in support. It sounds like you have one, which is fine, each of whom will have two minutes to present their testimony, followed by any other support witnesses who may come forward to provide their name, organization they represent, and their positions on the bill. Once we've heard from all the support witnesses, we will take testimony from two primary witnesses in opposition, each of whom will have two minutes to present their testimony, followed by any other opposition witnesses who may come forward to provide their name, organization they represent, and their positions on the bill. We're ready to take uh, your testimony, Superintendent Thurman. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Chair and members of the committee. I want to thank um, Assemblymember Ward and Senator Eggman uh, and the LGBT Caucus for authoring this bill, which I'm proud to support. And we respectfully ask for your I vote on AB 1955. As you heard, it has a framework that can uh, support students who can find themselves in vulnerable circumstances. Uh, the internal CDE administrative costs related to this bill are nominal. Um, CDE is tasked with providing online supports and community resources for parents and families on the agency website. Uh, CDE staff currently provide similar information and will be able to do so uh, in support of this bill without creating any new costs. Um, no new funding for positions or new hires is necessary. The nominal costs uh, will strengthen the role of public schools to educate our students and to protect them. And for those reasons, I respectfully ask for your IVO. Thank you very much. Um, is there, are there any witnesses that would like to testify in support? If so, we'd like you to come forward and um, to the mic. State your name and uh, your organization. Good morning, Cassie Mancini on behalf of the California School Employees Association in support. Thank you. Craig Pulsifer on behalf of Equality California in strong support. 
Becca Kramer Matter on behalf of ACLU California Action and strong support. Thank you. Good morning, Genesis Gonzalez on behalf of Lieutenant Governor Lenny Kudalakis in support. Thank you. Hi, Jessica Gachet of San Mateo representing PFLAG of San, Mate of San Jose and the Peninsula in strong support. May I read a list of people who are, could not be present today? Other organizations and their names, yes. Okay. Um, from Shasta County, Danny Goforth, Tam Tamara Pello, a Shasta, a Shasta County teacher. Um, Ms. Westfall of Stop Moms for Liberty, Shasta County. Kathy Darling Allen, a retired Shasta County clerk. Courtney Riss, a parent. Um, Jennifer Arnold of the Shasta Unified for Public Education, Joshua Brown, Cheryl McKinley of the Shasta Democratic Women's Club, Ali Evers of Up North Harm Reduction, Cynthia, Cynthia Frank, Jessica Davidson, Madison Zimmerman, Ellen Sweeney of Save Our Shasta, Tammy Cole, Sharon Brissolara of Inquiry That Matters, Robin Hank, Linda Russell, Colson R. Edwards, Nancy Alvord, Sandra Taylor, Susan Weiss, Janet Houghton, Donald Yost, Frank Treadway, Victoria Peterson, Martha Buto, Pam Hughes, Della Martin, Lisa Alvord, Lori O'Connell, Patricia Hamelberg, Linda Miller, and Jessica French. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Marilyn Dykstra from Livermore, California. I'm the bi and LGBTQ and the mother of two young adults. I am an admin, volunteer admin with Stop, a California Stop Moms for Liberty. And I ask you to please support AB 1955. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would like to testify and support? Seeing no other uh, witnesses in support, uh, witnesses in opposition. The two witnesses that um, will speak in opposition. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having us. My name is Jessica Wagner. I've been a public school teacher for 15 years. I have my master's in educational leadership and I'm an instructional specialist. Senator Scott Wiener, who is not a parent, is misleading the public about this bill. He disrespectfully labels teachers like me as nasty because we do not want to deceive parents if their children is experiencing dysphoria, which is a true mental health crisis. AB 1955 is wrong and harmful to students and teachers. Teachers do not want to come between their students and parents, and we certainly do not want to socially transition a child without parental consent or knowledge. This is why I expect to leave the profession after this year. The analysis recognizes that AB 1955 will be challenged in the courts because this bill is unconstitutional. As seen with Mirabelli and Tapia cases, teachers do not want to deceive parents. Tapia just settled her illegal firing for refusing to lie to parents for $360,000. There are over 300,000 teachers. What will it cost the state for more teacher lawsuits? Since 2025, since 2015, California has invested 4.8 billion in fire, finding teachers, going as far as creating 25 million in grants to change unqualified non-teaching staff into teachers, 350 million for residency programs, and there's still 10% vacancies. Why? Because teachers like me, who love teaching, refuse to hurt children by agreeing that a child can choose their sex and that their current body is a mistake that must be fixed. The analysis missed the true cost of the bill, a generation of sterilized children with healthy sexual organs missing, perpetual medical patients, and suicides, because social transition leads to medical transition. Last month, a U.S. study of 90 million U.S. adults showed that completed suicides for those who surgically transitioned was 12 times higher than those who accepted their natural bodies. Please consider the actual cost of this bill's expected long-term impact and vote no on AB 1955. Thank you very much. 
I'm Bella Miner, a former Democrat and one of the nasty parents Senator, Senator Weiner referenced to. My daughter used to believe that she was a boy when she was 11. She is now 20 and luckily never medicalized. AB 1955 will cost the states millions and worse, tens of thousands of children will be harmed. When the school groomed to my daughter at the age of 11 into believing she was a boy, there were not many parents fighting against the schools. And had it been now, we would have sued the school for the bullying she received because the teachers treated her as a boy. The analysis is silent on the cost of lawsuits by parents of gender dysphoric kids who were never told about their child's mental health issue before they committed suicide. The Attorney General states that 87% of all trans identified students have considered suicide. This, le this legislator says it's 78%. The 5.8 million students enrolled in California schools keeps dropping. Cal Matters reported that schools will lose 40 to 60,000 students annually. Inglewood is shutting down five schools. Schools are being defunded because of the secret social transition plans. Secret GSA clubs held at lunch to avoid detection. Classrooms covered in all things transgender and nonstop what's your pronoun games. There are millions of parents like Jessica Conan who will take advantage of the national law firms willing to take their cases pro bono. She received a 100,000 settlement for the secret transition of her 11-year-old daughter. Daughter. The school also paid more than 100000 to the suspended groomer teachers while Conan paid nothing in attorney fees. If one parent per school district sues, that's 954 lawsuits at 300000 That's a lot of money. Schools will be liable for pushing a mental health intervention that our European counterparts have stopped. The UK is also removing any mention of transgenderism from its schools, recognizing the social contagion. Vote no on AB. 1955. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that would like to testify in opposition? Tara Thornton, co-founder of Freedom Angels, in strong opposition and along with like an endless list of parents that would like to know about this and not be alienated from their kids' lives. Thank you. Denise Aguilar, co-founder of Freedom Angels, in strong opposition. Nicole Young, Placer County Chair of Chapter of Moms for Liberty. I represent over 1,200 parents. I also am speaking on behalf of Kimberly Cap Crabtree, Christina Munoz, Stan Sturger, Gretchen Stevens, April Huckabee, Amanda Kuntz, Caroline Alexander, Shemaine Phillips, Brianna G Gomez, Major Philip Malama of the United States Air Force, Delaney Malama, the California Policy Center, Wendy Beal, Beth Bourne, and Rick Mortensen. We are in strong opposition. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chair. Tom Sheehy, representing Protection of the Educational Rights of Kids Advocacy here in opposition this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, that's kind of high. <laughs> Margaret Arader, former Democrat, on behalf of Women Are Real, a bipartisan group of over 100 Bay Area women, both lesbian and straight, and Judy Cahill, Mountain View, registered Democrat, Charlotte Johnson, registered Independent, Beverly Talbot of San Francisco, registered De Democrat, Amy Anderson, registered Independent, Audra Starrett, Amy Rush, Carol, a detransitioned YouTuber, uh, united in respect for reality and in resolute objection to this dystopian bill. Thea Blair, former Democrat and middle, middle school teacher in strong opposition. Thank you. Thank you. Nathan Pierce on behalf of Private and Home Educators of California and Child and Family Protection Association in opposition. Thank you very much. Anyone else in opposition? Seeing no further uh, members either in support or in opposition, we'll bring it back to the committee for any questions, comments. Go ahead. Okay. Question. Yes. So in, in the testimony uh, given by Superintendent Thurman, he, he mentioned the nominal costs of this bill. Given the controversial nature of this and the almost, um, you can almost assure there will be numerous lawsuits. Um, what are those nominal costs? And how did you arrive at the figure that they are nominal and not phenomenal? 
Thank you for the question. So uh, costs under the bill related to the Department of Education because there is a requirement as the fourth provision that when I introduced uh, stated uh, that there would be one time general fund costs of approximately $54,000 to update and reformat online supports and resources, uh, community resources for parents and ongoing costs of approximately $22,000 to review and maintain that list that would be provided to local school districts. So those are the departmental costs for Department of Education that Superintendent uh, Thurman had highlighted. Uh, for litigation, that is speculative. We know that there has been a, um, a, a growing amount of litigation already uh, because of uh, local district policies that are either enacting or prohibiting, um, but much of that has been resolved um, generally within, I think, the favor of some of the tenants of what we're trying to achieve here uh, based on some of the court activity over the last year. It's why we felt, I felt necessary to introduce this bill that really just created a, a statewide baseline for what we're going to do or not do in, the, in regards to this issue. Does that figure also, does it figure the amount of money that we have spent um, suing the various districts that we talked about and finding that they didn't really have standing to sue? That the districts did not have standing to sue? Well, no, the, the districts didn't sue. Our attorney general sued. So there's cost already related to this type of bill. So and is it does this does that cost is that included in the administrative or whatever the cost that you're you're including in those nominal fees? So I think what we've seen is that there was uh, ambiguity as far as any statutory guidance on this issue, which is exactly what AB 1955 seeks to rectify is to be able to provide that very clearly in our statute. Um, okay. We've had local districts, for example, that have engaged in lawsuits, and this is coming right out of their budget that could otherwise be going into the classroom. Chino Valley alone, we're aware, has spent more than $500,000 in district legal expenses uh, trying to defend itself. Okay, thank you very much for some of your explanation. Thank you. Senator. Thank you. Uh, I, I just wanted to make clear on, on the uh, report here, it says existing law provides that it is the policy of the state to afford all persons in public schools, regardless of their disability, gender, gender identity, gender expression, nationality, race, or ethnicity, religion, sexual orientation, or any other characteristic that is contained in the definition of hate crime set forth. Uh, do you believe that um, because of this, that the cost is nominal to some degree? Yes. Okay, um, and I, I heard a lot of the opposition. I just wanted to uh, ask you, this bill would actually allow for educators not to get involved in uh, exposing a child or coming in between the child and their parent, correct? Exactly. The point of the bill is that we should not have outside actors uh, engaged on um, this very personal decision uh, for one to own about to whom and when they want to come out. Um, Teachers want to teach. They don't want to be the gender police. Okay. And and this bill in, in particular would require that California Department of Education develop some support and resources for the parents of children that are LGBTQ. That's correct. correct. All right. Uh, I do appreciate it. I appreciate the work. Um, I just think that there's a lot of... Um, misinformation about this bill. Um, it's very clear uh, based on this report. With that, I'll move the bill. Okay. We have a motion. Uh, the motion is due pass to the Senate floor. Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Um, I'd like to uh, interject just real quick and make a substitute motion. Okay. Uh, there seems to be some considerable conversation around the cost of this bill and the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. uh, Attorney General Rob Bonta's own Department of Justice has raised some concerns that this bill will require multiple full-time employees and that the impact on the enforcement division is unquantifi unquantifiable and potentially significant. That's from the DOJ itself. So to translate that in actual dollars, those costs could easily reach into the low millions of dollars from the general fund, depending on how many lawsuits occur. This committee's rule for suspense is whether the bill will cost more than $50,000 to the general fund. Therefore, the bill, bill clearly meets the criteria to be sent to the suspense file to be uh, considered later. I'm sure that my colleagues have not forgotten that the state is facing a budget deficit in the range of $60 billion. Plus, there is no urgency clause in the bill, so there is no rush that we need to dispense with this today. There should be no need to bypass uh, the rules on this particular bill. So I would make a substitute motion that AB 1955 be sent to suspense. All right. We have a substitute motion, and my apologies to Assemblymember Ward. I didn't give him an opportunity to, to close. Okay. So we'll hear his close, and then we'll take up your substitute motion. Just respectfully request your I vote. Thank you. Very good. 
So there is a substitute motion on the floor. Uh, the chair recommends a no vote to the substitute motion. Please call the roll. Caballero? No. Caballero, no. Jones? Aye. Jones, aye. Ashby? Becker? Bradford? Ciarto? Aye. Ciarto, aye. Wahab? No. Wahab, no. Uh, the motion fails. Uh, we'll move on to the motion in chief, uh, which is to send it to the floor. Please call the roll. Caballero? Aye. Caballero, aye. Jones? No. Jones, no. Ashby? Becker? Bradford? Ciarto? No. Ciarto, no. Wahab? Aye. Wahab, aye. We'll leave that on call for 